Hi everybody, welcome to this special CUBE presentation. We're here at IBM at One Madison. My name is Dave Vellante and we're exploring business transformation, but more specifically, how customers and clients can get value out of their AI initiatives and the new wave around business transformation. And with me is Tony Menezes, who's the global managing partner for intelligent business operations at IBM Consulting. Tony, thanks for spending some time with us. Dave, glad to be here, looking forward to our conversation. I love IBM titles, there's a lot to them, so let's unpack it. What, is, what does it mean to be the head of intelligent business operations for IBM Consulting? How do you spend your time? Great question, Dave. So, the role that I'm responsible for and the team that I work with is all about how do we deliver value for our clients around their business operations. A lot of times clients will run finance operations, HR operations, procurement operations, and increasingly we're moving along with customer service and marketing operations and also some very specific industry operations. The issue here is you know, how do we actually take what clients have already started and sometimes they've already centralized this in what they call their shared services organization or even their global business services organization and try and really untap the value that these enterprises are doing within their organizations and how we can add value to them along the way. So I'm sure you're familiar with portfolio management approaches and you, at a very high level, I like to look at just to simplify things, run the business, grow the business and transform the business and they ebb and flow. Have you seen in the last couple of years, given the whole AI wave, that there's more of a focus on transform the business? Very much so. In fact, you know, if you look at the business that we're involved with, which is really around business process outsourcing and operations, it has evolved from being a very labor-centric business where it started over two decades ago to over the last five plus seven years kind of becoming more of a tech-infused business. But today, it's all around process transformation. How can we leverage the insights we have in running our clients' operations across all those domains and actually bring those insights to them, leveraging technology, around the process to really give them a truly transformed operations. And in doing so, we're actually finding that there's a tremendous opportunity to unleash value for our clients. We do believe that GBS organizations or global business service organizations, you know, can and should be growth enablers within the enterprise. So again, to, to simplify things, CXOs, CFOs, CEOs, they want to drive more cash flow, put, you know, money at the bottom line. Um, but there's an inertia in organizations and there's a tendency to pave the cow path with mm -hmm. processes. How do you sort of balance those and, and what are you seeing, you know, particularly are you able to, are you, are you seeing any patterns in terms of AI flywheels and process flywheels that are emerging? I think what we are noticing quite honestly is that because we take a look at how the work is getting done, we're able to tell clients with data that these types of work efforts is basically either unnecessary or even better, how work can be done differently to unleash value. A lot of our commercial conversations we're having with clients is now we're putting our neck out to say we can deliver the outcome and we'll get paid on a percentage of that outcome that we delivered. That allows us to basically tell our clients what they can actually put, put up you know, with us or we can put up with them to be able to get to those types of results. So we talk about you know, treading old paths. Yes, we have the experience and the expertise of what we've done, Lessons learned from a lot of good things and some things not so great that we've done as well. But to bring that together for our clients basically by tapping into that expertise is what we are able to drive value. Are clients actually going for the gain sharing where you take a piece of the, they, they the, the benefit? It. They ask for it, they want it. There's a lot of times, you know, they've got to be able to step up on their half of the plate to get it. But clients are expecting that more and more from their service providers. That's, that's actually would be a really interesting transformation in, in your business. Yeah. I could see in, in previous eras, uh, the attractiveness of doing that, because you have a lot of confidence that you can actually deliver that value. It de-risks it for the client, but the tail end, they could end up you know, giving away a lot of money to a company like IBM, uh, who's so proficient at this. Uh, but so, is there, do you think it's different this time around, where customers, maybe there's a little bit more uncertainty, maybe they feel like there's a little bit more risk, and they will be more willing to do that type of gain sharing? I think when, when we talk to clients about gain sharing, first of all, it also depends on where they are in their maturity to be able to actually truly understand what we're talking about. It's not just a sales pitch, but also be able to execute and deliver on it. But one of the first things that we find in talking to our clients is that 
The harder part of doing this thing is actually getting the change management done within their own enterprises to be able to tap into the true value of what can be delivered from some of our solutions. So to us, it's actually a journey that we take with our clients. It's not the very first thing we would do for a client that's not yet mature, that's not yet gone to the baselining and understanding what their true operating costs and models are. But once we are able to work with our clients and actually be able to demonstrate to them what insights we have, what can be done, then it's a matter of what's the right commercial model to work with them on actually getting to that value. And sometimes it does take them to kind of say, look, if I'm going to put some skin in the game, then they got to be able to step up to their half of the bargain to be able to deliver on that skin of the game. But that's the level of confidence that we're able to bring to our clients in some of these engagements. I think that's the key is you, you, you've got the confidence in that. So you're flexible. You'll approach that either way. Can you help us connect the dots between the, the, the business strategy that you're delivering, the service delivery, and just sort of day-to-day -day business ops? How are you enabling customers to grow in that sort of in that flywheel. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, um, increasingly clients are asking us, look, we didn't come to IBM to just lift and shift a bunch of work from one end of the world to the other. They're not only, the expectation of innovation in some of these processes is also almost a yesterday kind of expectation. Clients are actually asking us to say, you know, one CFO basically told me, you know more about my business than any other consultant. I would pay millions of dollars to just tell me what I know, what you already know. So how can you actually take that insights and actually be transformative? How can you step up and say, we will transform the finance operations, all the HR operations, all the customer service journey for our clients? And that's where I think we have the opportunity to be really different in delivering our values for our customers. So it's about taking the insights we've had, not only working for the existing clients, but also how that could transcend to other clients in the same industry at the process level. Process is cr critical here because that expertise is what actually allows us to be demonstrative to a client, driving the change that's required on the client side, and bringing technology to enable all of that. Glad you mentioned process, because there's obviously a lot of buzz about agents and agentic, and you know, we joke that there's a lot of agent washing, but process is, it's not just the data. The data's hard enough to get your arms around, but, but having that process knowledge is, seems to be fundamental if you're going to actually not pave the cow path and you're going to reimagine your processes, which is, I think, very important because, you know, these, these startups are going to come out of the woodworks. You know, you always hear these stories about, you know, five employees created getting to a million dollars or two employees getting to a million dollars of revenue and, you know, in a week kind of thing. Okay, maybe that's an overstatement, but it's illustrative of how things are going to change in this new era. So if you're an incumbent, you really need to rethink where your processes can be, can be streamlined. So when you think about agentic AI, what are you seeing that's real? How are clients applying that with specific process knowledge and what kind of outcomes are you seeing? So the whole AI, Gen AI, agentic, you know, has all been part of the hype. This industry has been subject to hype in the past and continues to be part of it. What our clients are actually asking us to show them is like, show me the proof points of how this can really work. They all want to crawl before they run. They all understand the hype out there. They're all trying to internalize it. Where we've been successful with our clients is to actually show them how it works in their processes, how it can change not only the work that we do for them, but the adjacent work that they've retained, and more importantly, how they should really kind of reimagine the way work can get done. The reimagine the way work gets done is a harder part of the discussion. It's an easier presentation or a sales pitch to make to a given client. It's them internalizing it and getting it into their entire organization that is the harder yards to, to walk through. And so we need to be able to demonstrate that to our clients on how we can do so. We've tend to do that where we've been able to demonstrate that within, you know, POCs are dead, everybody's got enough of those. We actually are taking them and actually showing them on productive work within a small subset of, our biz of the client's business. And once they see it, the buy-in is tremendous, right? You're going to be meeting with some of our clients throughout this, this narratives here. You'll see how they've taken a small part of what we've done for them and I've actually exploded that across the enterprise. That's the way I think we're going to get people to buy into AI and agentic services. That's clearly there. You know, you hear a lot of my colleagues talk about how we're actually making it real, but it's definitely kind of getting the proof points and getting the buy-in from the enterprise that's really critical to make it scale in, in the company. Interesting what you just said, POCs are dead. And, and I, 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 I agree in the sense that, okay, we got to get beyond the POCs. Right. We've done a lot of experimentation in the cloud the real value, high value data lives within my four walls and I have no way I'm getting, letting that seep into LLMs if, right, I can, right, right, right. if I can help it. So how do you balance that sort of near term need with the long term vision? Right, so as, a, as, the, as the, the lead of the business here, right? So what we have told our teams and we encourage them 
is that they need to be prepared to cannibalize the current work we do for our clients by bringing all of these ways of working for our given clients. There's natural fear that, hey, I'm supposed to grow my business, I'm supposed to add value, how do I do this? What we found is that by actually driving value for our clients, we've actually expanded the overall pie of what we do for our clients is at the same time. The trick here actually is to, if I take a process, let's take source to pay as a process. Clients buy stuff and then we pay stuff, right? We're involved in several elements of that process. Not 100% because clients tend to retain certain parts of it, we do certain parts of it, go back and forth on how that entire process is done within a, within a client. What we're able to show our clients is that how it's effective today, what it could be if it's actually done slightly differently, and where value can be unleashed. Sometimes it's simple policy changes. Sometimes it does require you know, a big ERP implementation at some point. But sometimes there's a lot of things in between that we can actually drive a level of automation, a level of insights, and a level of change the way the work gets done to drive value. And by doing so incrementally and, and across the, the spectrum is when we actually do unleash value for our clients. As a result, clients are then saying, okay, can you now help me reduce the entire cost from that entire process, including what's done on our side of the fence and on your side of the fence? And that's when this is actually coming to be real in driving value for our customers here. So I'm, I'm interested in how much of the confidence that you have that you can achieve those outcomes is from actual data, because everybody says we're in the early innings of, of Gen AI and AI and this AI way, which is true, but right. we've been in the early innings now for a couple of years. Correct. At this pace, you know, we're starting to get toward the, the middle part <laughs> of the, right, yeah. the, the, the game. Um, so how much of that is actual data that you have from clients versus modeling from previous experience? The advantage of is that we have is that we've got a, a good incumbent portfolio across many different industries. So that gives us the insights to be able to say we can prove it to our existing clients and they can extrapolate and then deliver that for other clients, especially on an industry by industry level. It does start with data. If you go back, one is data, it's the operational data. We know how our clients are doing, we know how they benchmark against, you know, at the process level, how they get benchmarking against others in the industry or best in class, et cetera. But then to make it real, for a customer to adopt all of these new technologies, AI, Agentic, and all the other things you threw out there, it does require us to be able to access the client data around that process. And we're working with our clients on how to extract that. We recognize they've made significant investments in their core systems, whether it's the ERP systems or the HRM systems or the CRM systems. So we're able to just leave those in place, but extract the data, manipulate the data that needs to do to facilitate that workflow and push that data back. One very important thing in all of this, Dave, while we have a lot of focus around data and process improvement, this work is now getting to be a lot more digital operations, and it's critical that we actually have a consumer-grade experience for any consumer of this service. And to me, the consumer is the internal employee that's doing work in the enterprise. It's a supplier that supports that given enterprise. It's even customers of that given enterprise. And that consumer-grade experience is really critical because all of the digital work that we can do, if that experience sucks, they're not coming back, right? They're going to call back and they're going to go back to that labor-based play. And so this is really an important part of us. To us, the, the formula is process expertise, understanding where the client's data is to support those processes, and giving the consumers that service a consumer great experience that really brings together the adoption of new ways of working that unleashes the value for our clients. Well, what you just described is actually a data transformation, um, whereas you're, you're actually not sucking in all the data, putting it into a yet another stovepipe, doing some analysis on it, and then all, then it's, now you've got another batch job, yep, and it's yeah, an asynchronous yeah. process. You're actually describing what I sometimes refer to as a, you know, a real-time representation of an intelligent enterprise. Is that where we're heading? That is, data is it, I'll be honest with you. In fact, we've been debating as to what do we call ourselves when we approach our clients. Somebody even said we should call ourselves business data services was one of the names that came out there. But look, data makes all this work, right? It's about, and clients are struggling with this. It's a big issue, it's all over the place, there's no standards within the enterprise. People call the same things different by different names. So we have to work with our clients to get that all to the right level, but we do believe that that's the way to unleash the value within the enterprise. So last question, a lot of action obviously in the public cloud. Um, are, are clients prepared to go and tap that, bring that AI to the data? They're not going to put that proprietary data in the cloud, most likely. Why move it if it's, if it's working? I want to modernize it there, bring AI to that data. Um, describe the spectrum that you're seeing 
in, in clients um, across the board? Well, if you go back and look at the types of services that we do, right, from financial services to HR services to procurement services to customer services, clearly the stuff that's customer facing, you know, clients are able to consume it. You know, it's a lot of that's already on the web or the internet. So some of that content that's product centric or service centric, you know, obviously the clients are willing to let that be in the public cloud. When it gets to the financial systems and the HR systems especially, there's a lot of sensitivity to what can or cannot be used elsewhere. We are working with clients and actually bringing that in a hybrid way so that they can leverage the, the capabilities that's out there. We're working with them on models that actually make sense for their enterprise. And that's the journey we're on, right? So it is really about kind of giving the client the blend of what's appropriate for them to be able to achieve the objectives. Okay. All right, thanks Perfect. so much for spending some time with thanks. us. Really thanks appreciate, a lot. It. appreciate it. All right, keep it right there. We're going to dig deeper into how IBM is helping clients transform. We've got some customer case studies as well. This is Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE.